Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to look at z-scores. Z-scores are a way to compare multiple different normal distributions, but they're also a tool that allow us to calculate the probability using a normal curve. In a continuous probability distribution, the probability and the area under a curve are the same thing. So we're going to use those two terms interchangeably. Now our formula for a z-score is equal to the random variable value x minus mu, which is our mean of course, divided by sigma or our standard deviation. Once we've calculated a z-score, we will sketch a normal curve and shade the area that we're interested in and either use a normal probability table, which I'll show you in the next slide, but it can also be found in the back of any statistics textbook or just Google and find it on the internet. Or in later videos, I'll show you also how to use the calculator to find the area to the left of a particular z-score. So let's check out how to use z-scores with the normal table. So here's what a normal table looks like, or a portion of one. So I've just taken a small portion here. Use the normal table to find the cumulative area that corresponds to a z-score of 0.55. So a z-score of 0.55 represents, if we're working with a standard normal distribution, which again is the normal distribution with mean of 0 and sigma of 1, then that means we are at a place on the horizontal axis that represents 0.55. So that would be approximately here. And when we're talking about the cumulative area, that represents the area to the left of that value. So we are looking at this area. Now one thing that we know just based on our knowledge of normal distributions is that the area to the left of zero is 50% or 0.5. So just thinking through, we expect the area below 0 0.55 to be slightly more than 50%. So how do we use this table to find area? Notice that we have a bunch of row labels here, 0 0.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and so on. And then we have column labels that are representing the hundredths place. So 0 0.00, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, and so on. Those are your z-scores. So to build a z-score of 0.55, I'm going to go down to 0.5 row and I'm going to go over to the 0 0.05 column. I'm then going to look at the intersection of that row and that column, which leads me to 0 0.7088. And that is the area that lies below 0 0.55. So our probability of finding an x value that is less than 0 0.55 on the normal distribution is 0 0.7088. Or another way of saying that is that 70 or about 71% of our data values lie below a z-score of 0 0.55. All right, let's try that one more time. So same setup here, use the normal table to find the cumulative area that corresponds to being above a z-score of 0 0.34. So first we want to find the location of 0 0.34, so that would be about here. And this time we want to be above that. Okay, so we're looking at this area here. Now, our z-score table always tells us area below. 
okay? So that's what this always tells us. But we know that the area under the entire curve is equal to one. So if we do one minus the area below, that will leave us with the area above. So in this case, we're actually gonna use the table to find the area below 0 0.34 and do one minus that to get our area above. So again, using our table 0 0.34, that means I'm gonna go down to the 0 0.3 row and across to the 0 0.04 column. And I'm gonna find the value that is at the intersection of that row and that column which is 0.6331. So now I want to do one minus 0.6331, which gives me a value of 0.6331. So the area above a z-score of 0 0.34 is found by doing 1 minus the area below 0.34, and that gives me 0.3669. All right, guys, that does it for this video on z-scores using the normal table. In our next videos, we'll talk about how to use technology to do the same thing. Until then, we'll see you next time.